All right, we're going to look at an example that uses application caching to be able to save web pages so that they can be viewed even when you're offline. So I'm going to look at an example of it. We're going to look at the code. Then we're going to play around a little bit with the code to um, see what influence different things have um, on it. So, some of the implications of it. So, I have just a straightforward HTML page. And we can look at it locally on my machine, and then we're going to look at it up on the web server. too fancy. But something that has a page and page for cross-country skiing and then there are other pages as well. I use this in my 216 class to do some stuff. Now, in order for caching to work, there's a couple things that have to happen. All right. Number one, you need to create a app cache manifest file. And you need to set that manifest in the manifest section of your page. So let's look at how I've altered the page and how I've altered the manifest. All right. Manifest equals the name of the file dot app cache. Now, there's one thing that you have to do on the server side. I've done it on our server, but if you're going to run this on your local server, you're going to have to add a MIME type, M-I-M-E type. So, what you need to do, and if you're running XAMP, there is an Apache config file. You have to go and add that to your Apache manifest. And down here is where you'll see the syntax for that. Add type text slash cache dash manifest dot app cache. Effectively, what that does is that tells the web server specifically how to deliver certain files to the browser so that the browser knows and understands that that is an app cache file. So on our server, you don't need to do that. But if you're going to test this on your local machine, you will need to go and do that. If you're running Windows IIS, you add the, um, you add the app cache another way. Or you add the uh, MIME type another way. You'd go into IIS and Oops. 
you would go in and under MIME types, you'd go and you'd add in the app cache one, just as you see it there. This, is, this effectively tells the web server what kind of file it is and helps it deliver it to the browser. So if you had IIS, this is how you'd add it. If you had Apache, which um, XAMPP is based off of, you would go into the Apache config file and add this line. All right. Once you do that, then you can define the application manifest. And let's go and look at it. This specifies the files that we want to cache. Now, a few things about caching. All right? A few things about caching. Number one, it can't cache the file if you haven't visited the page. All right? So, in other words, there's nothing that can be done if someone hasn't visited your site and they try to access it when they're not online, right? It only makes sense. There's no way for their browser to have loaded that page, so it can't be cached. So, first of all, they have to visit your page. Secondly, you supply a list of files or resources other than the pages themselves that you want to cache. And you can specify it several different ways. I'm using an absolute address to it. So, slash cache is a web server's root directory. I want to cache a file called style.css. Root directory cache images home.jpg. And finally, cache pattern.png. Those are the extra files that go with my web pages. In other words, the style.css is a CSS file. The home.jpg is the image that was on the home page. And finally, pattern.png is the pattern that you get. So I'm caching those in addition to caching the web pages. The web pages are sort of implied. Network. The stuff that follows network is the stuff that you never want to cache. For example, in this particular case, I pretended that maybe places would contain a weather forecast and we wouldn't want to show people that page if they're offline because that could be misleading. Could say that it is going to be, you know, 32 degrees when in reality it's going to be 15 below with 80 mile an hour winds and, and, and sleet and snow and, you know, that kind of weather. So under network says they need to be connected to the network to view this page. Finally, I can specify a fallback for any file that is not cached. And that fallback I've defined as any, any file, any web page within the cache folder that it can't find, use this offline.html file. All right. So I'm going to go and I'm going to access on our server, cissql.lorraineccc.edu slash cache. All right? And there's a page. We're connected to the Internet. All right? So let's go and disconnect this from the Internet. So we're no longer on the internet. I hit refresh. I still see the page. What's going to happen if I click classical skate or places? Okay, that, that is kind of true. But I have not, never gone to those pages yet. So because I've never gone to them, it's not going to be able to display them. So what will it display? It will display that fallback page. 
So if I go to classical, notice I get the contents of offline.html. How did that happen? Well, I had never visited the classical page yet. The only page I had visited was the home page. Therefore, it's not going to give me the classical page because it's never been to that page. So it's not ha it, it has it has not not been cached. It will give me then the offline page, the fallback page. Likewise, if I go to any of the other pages too. Interestingly enough, this one, because it's set to network, is looking for it. It requires it to be on the network. It's never going to show anything from cache for this one. All right? I was a little mistaken about that. I was surprised when that happened, but now that I think about it, it makes sense. Why? I said, hey, this page, you have to be connected to the network to view. Don't do any caching with it. So when I go and, and click on it, I get this. Now, if I go back to here, oops. interesting, it's telling me that. I'll bet it's doing it based on the URL. So if I went, if I went, Plug it back in. Plug back into here. Now the one thing I didn't do is I didn't go in and put the manifest on the other pages. I only put the manifest on the one page. So that could be why some of those other ones are acting goofy as well. All right. I'm going to go in and I'm going to change this background pattern. So I'm going to edit this background pattern. I'm going to 
into the cache folder images I'm going to go drag the new home image and I'm going to say to overwrite all right so now when I go and view this again is pulling the old one off of cache. All right, so that's why I'm not seeing the new image. All right, how can I make it see the new image? One thing you can do is you can change the manifest. So it's not going to refresh that cache until the manifest changes. So me changing the contents of a file doesn't change the cache. It won't recache it. So what I need to do is I need to go in here and I'm going to go in and I'm going to edit the manifest. And this is where in the textbook or one of the examples I read it said put a comment in there because a comment is going to be a change. So I can put in 2014, 11, 10, changed image. save it. I can then go and use FileZilla to move that. Oh, you know what? I put it in the wrong... Yeah, I'm not getting the right one over there. Okay, let's try take two. something wrong here. Let's look at Here's that. Here's that. I'm going to edit it. Alright, there it is. I save it. I then go in and drag it over. it, I think I need to then go and redo the last step of changing my manifest again. There we go. So I had to go and clear the cache manually for that to happen. Um, I have read some articles about this that talked about the cache misbehaving and things like that. So 
there can be issues associated with it. Um, it should have been that all I needed to do was change that, um, change that manifest, but it seems like there were issues um, with that. All right, now it downloaded the new cache, so if I went and disconnected again and I brought it up, it would bring up the, the page um, with the new image. And the same thing applies for style sheets or images or any other files. If you change the contents of, of a file, but you don't add a new file to be cached, then supposedly that won't matter and it won't cause a refresh of the cache. All right. There are things you can do programmatically, I believe, with the application cache too. You could write some JavaScript and, and so on as well, um, I believe, to do stuff like that. Let's do a quick search. And there's testing for updates to cache manifest. You can go in, you can put code in to, to access this. I'm wondering if some of my problems are because I didn't put the actual names of the files to be the web pages. I just put the CSS and image there. That's something you can you can play with. That could have been the cause of some of my issues that I was getting. The fact that I did not put in that I wanted to cache index.html. Let's let's do that. Let's go and change my manifest. to cash that save it Oops. let me FTP it over these pages. We're okay. Now if I go and disconnect. Whoa. From the web. The pages that we visited are available even though we're not connected to the web. Interesting, it's still giving me places. Uh, and it's not giving me the fallback one. That is odd. Okay. So for your assignment, I want you to take and cache two of the three pages and have a fallback page like I did. That will be your next to last assignment. Your last assignment, and um, 
we'll see, um, we'll spend some time talking about this as well, but your last assignment will be to take one of your applications, I, I think the, the locator one, and create it, create an Android app using PhoneGap Build. And we'll talk about PhoneGap Build probably next time. All right. This is week 12. Um, your quiz is out there and enabled, so you have a week to take that, I think until end of the day next Monday to take that. Are there any questions about this? Of course, in order for this to work, your device needs to have the browser enabled. To, to do that. It has to have the, the proper <coughs> browser. Older browsers that don't take advantage of that, it, you know, it wouldn't necessarily work with. The only question I have is um, you're talking about the exam manifest tag. Where mm -hmm. would you, exactly where you put that? Where you put it in exam? Like, you said to put the tag of the text manifest tag or whatever. Okay. Um, where would you put that in your HTML file? Okay. Couple things. First of all, in your HTML file is just an attribute on your HTML tag. Mm -hmm. All right. But within XAMP, let's see if I can download XAMP real quick. Or actually, let's do this. I'll tell you what. I have XAMP on my laptop. I yeah, I, I do as well. I can I'll I'll email the, the proper file over and then we can then we can look at where to do that. Don't be afraid to go in.
big old configuration file. All right. You'll notice towards the bottom, there's all these different things for different types that you can allow within the mine module. And one of them, and you should see other add types too, if you use a default um, configuration file, which you probably had, just put after where it says add type text slash html dot shtml, then I put add type text slash cache manifest dot app cache. So you just, you find where that file is, the httpd dot conf, find where that is on your particular machine. You can then open that up in a simple text editor, like Notepad or Notepad++. Excuse me. And then you add that line. Yeah, you add that line. This tells the web server how to handle certain files that CGI files, for example, things written in Perl or .cgi, gets handled a certain way, and so on. But one of the things we have to do is do that. Now that's if you're running XAM. While you're in there, take a look at it. In addition, while you're in there, before you go around editing that file, it might be a good idea to make a copy of that file. Because if you mess up that file, your Apache installation won't work. You probably will need to stop and start the server after you edit that file for it to load it. I'm almost positive you do. I can't say 100% because whenever I make a change like that, I automatically turn, you know, shut the server down and, and, and power the server back up. Um, that way, if it did need a reboot, then it will take care of it. All right, questions? All right. See you down in the lab.